Hello and welcome to the Hunter Burt Memorial Open 2024 10-year anniversary. We made it 10 years. I'm Hal Brady here with David Palmer. David, how's it going? Doing well. Excited to be here. This is a favorite tournament every year, and uh, we're here for a very good reason. Uh, the graphics at the beginning uh, were a little different than what we've done in the past, really uh, impactful and uh, important to remember the reason that we're here doing this event. Uh, we're here for a whole day full of modern in a brand new format for a second year in a row. <laughs> yep. uh, we had a, a banning just this week that changed the format format up a little bit. So it's fun to be on the cutting edge for the second year in a row. Um, we have uh, 339 players registered for today. We'll be playing modern all day and then going into day two tomorrow. Uh, the Hunter Burton runs all weekend long and there are dozens and dozens of side events, artists, vendors, places to play board games and CDH and anything else that your, your heart desires here at the Hunter Burton this weekend. Uh, so if you're not here yet, we'd love to see you come out. Yeah, just come hang out. I mean, you know, even if you don't want to have to suffer through an entire main event, stressful, you know, competitive tournament, come hang out, play board games, play magic, learn how to play different games, all kinds of stuff going on. And come out and, and support the, the cause here, which is uh, gaming to prevent suicide. Uh, we are going to be starting uh, with our first round one feature match in just a moment. We're going to be having uh, Travis Brown. going to be playing uh, Mikey Hopkins, a uh, DFW uh, staple uh, of the, the magic scene, playing uh, Azorius Control. As he's known to do. As he is known to do. <laughs> he, uh, he posted his, uh, his a, a picture of his physical deck, all his cards, and I know he's been kind of blinging out the deck with all the different alternate arts and, and foils and such. Uh, his deck looks sick. <laughs> what's uh, what's your, your opinion on uh, blinged out? I know that there was a, a big curling problem for a while with magic cards that pushed me kind of away from foils, but now all the alternate arts, you can really make it look however you want. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's I feel like I'm a part of magic history by registering for not one, but two competitive level events where I got to legally play proxied mountains that were Nexus of Fate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely something will hopefully never have to do again <laughs> i wasn't not gonna not play nexus of fate i mean absolutely not i believe we have a, an esper sentinel and an ornithopter on travis brown's side uh mike hopkins started off with a preordain now he's uh fetching with what looks like a misty uh i don't know the alternate art that is in play i assume that's a hallowed fountain though it is a hallowed yep. fountain I feel like Azorius Control is probably going to be favored in game one and then probably get worse for the control deck in game two and three. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing for me is the Azorius Hammer deck playing uh, hard from uh, Murder's uh, Cryptic Coat, which I had not seen before, which does give them some inevitability in a game that goes longer uh, if Mikey's not able to close it out. The Azorius Control deck... Kind of as expected with solitudes and subtleties and the one rings as their ways to kind of win the game. One ring doesn't win the game, but it wins the game. Yeah. <laughs> so have you played much modern at all recently, lately? Looked at some, some decks? What would you be on if you were playing today? If I was playing today, I'd be playing Esper Gorios. Not because I think it's the best deck. Uh, I think that the best deck currently, based on everything that has happened, is Yawgmoth. Uh, but Esper Gorios just fits into my wheelhouse of all the things I like to be doing. Yeah, me uh, too. And if I'm going to spend all day playing, I've learned that I need to have fun, uh, or else I'm just going to be miserable by the end of the day. What about you? I, honestly, the same. I love a good, terrible Gorios Vengeance deck. Um, I remember playing the, like... The, the shoal version where you're pitching World Spine Worm to gain 14 life just so you can draw 14 more cards with Grizzlebrand. Mm -hmm. Well, that was, a, that was a fun deck to play. This one's a little different putting uh, the new uh, Atraxa into play and uh, a still a couple Grizzlebrand, I think, in the list. So we have the Stoneforge Mystic out of Travis. He already has a cigar as aid in play. It's a very dangerous opening. Looks like we're going to get a subtlety out of Mikey here, and he's going to exile a Narset, which is not great in this matchup. <laughs> Turns out. That one. Uh, it looks like there's already a One Ring in the graveyard as well. 
uh, wondering good in this matchup and every matchup. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, I have seen a. I did get to see a, a peek at Mikey's list, and he's got the Narset uh, Days Undoing uh, mm-hmm. interaction, which I'm a big fan of. I always loved Days Undoing. It just felt like it never really found its home. Uh, so it's fun to see that it actually is uh, seeing a little bit of play here in modern. It's definitely one of those cards I tried to play when it was standard legal. Uh, it was could never make it work. I've played a lot of bad Days Undoing decks in my lifetime. <laughs> uh, but I've played way more blue-white control, let's be honest. That's, yeah. that's where I grew up. That's where I cut my teeth. And uh, if anybody liked playing all of their matches and giving themselves a headache, that was me. Yeah, I feel like uh, a blue eye control is is kind of similar to Yogmoth in Modern, where it's like that's a those players that play their blue eye controller Yogmoth, they've been playing it for years. Like at this point, like all the Yogmoth players I know, that's all they play. That's all they've ever played in Modern, and I feel like to get the prowess with that deck, you've really got to be an expert. And kind of same with blue eye control, especially with like picking your your main deck cards and sideboard cards for the weekend, especially right after a banning. Control is kind of a hard place to be if you don't exactly know what to expect. Looks like Mikey shocked in a second Hallowed Fountain there to leave four mana up this turn. Maybe has another subtlety in hand that he wants to just play out. If you're what? if you're playing against him, yeah, it is the subtlety. If you're on the other side, you got to be worried about like a Wandering Emperor. If they leave up four and just do nothing. Like, if they shock to leave up four. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> it's the old Coco. I don't have anything. I didn't draw. Yeah. I got, I got <laughs> one card left in hand. Play my fourth <laughs> land. you go. Super vigilant. Uh, before you and I started doing the coverage, I believe the last time I played in this event, which I played in every year before we started doing this, I played uh, Azorius Control. But it looked really different yep. all those years ago. Yeah, it's definitely evolved. All the decks right. in Modern have gotten a lot of new toys to play with. Oh, look, it's the Stoneforge Mystic that we all knew was there. <laughs> man, Esper Sentinel is one of those cards, like, you see on turn one, it's just like, oh, oh man. It's an overwhelming card to deal with. Uh, the Sigarda's Aid really makes this hammer dangerous uh, for Mikey. <laughs> Mikey, at some point, is going to Wrath. He's going to clear the board up. But you got to be careful not to just take 10 <laughs> or 11 and go to 3. Can't do that too many times. Um, oh, and this this is kind of the opening that Azorius Hammer is looking for. They want to put Blue-White on the back foot as quickly as possible because if the game goes long, they're just in a lot of trouble. Quip is going to target the Sentinel. Solitude is going to eat the Sentinel in response. Yeah, just one. I like that part. It's not very good. So, yeah. full paid. The uh, the pitch elementals really gave Blue White a different avenue. No longer having to play Path, but getting to play Solitude made a, yeah. a big difference in the way this deck interacts. And when it's at this point, when you have five mana, now you have a lifelink 3 2 in play as well. We're going to get the Narset. Second Narset drawn this game. Oh, man. We're at a point in the game where Blue White's comfortable, comfortable playing, playing, playing a Narset. Or we're maybe out of gas, but. It's possible. But two mana up. Finds a prismatic ending. Yep. You gotta think he probably has counterspell available to him. A blue white deck does not close quickly. It will give you time. The control one now. Yeah, right, fair, <laughs> fair, fair, fair. My, my apologies. Uh, at this point, if Mikey can stabilize, Mikey really just wants a one ring over everything else because it just would allow him to bury his opponent uh, in card advantage while basically time walking him uh, and taking a turn off of being in any danger. So something something new we're doing this year, we're actually casting live from the VIP lounge on site. So if you want to come check out the stream setup, say hi, check it out. Well, you'd have to be a VIP member, but <laughs> you can see us from the door. <laughs> if you... Uh... If you want to come by and say hi, talk about what this event means to you, what Hunter meant to you, uh, we would love to talk to you and uh, have some more members of the community be around. Uh, so Mikey had Prismatic Inning, chose to get the Sigarda's Aid and not the Hammer. It looked like he thought about it for a second. Uh, Travis is putting a Hammer on his Ornithopter, which loses flying. Important thing to note. It's a heavy Hammer. Heavy Hammer. It's very yeah. big. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, the fly with that thing. I don't know how the Ornithopter holds it, to be honest. I'm uh, flavor judge ruling. Got teeth or something? I don't know. Finds a solitude that he can't take with the Narset. That's a good one. 
Gonna take another prismatic ending though. Those are good. Those are solid. Very strong. Hammer's uh oh, get rid of the hammer this time. Get rid of the hammer. I was about to say hammer's less scary when all of the creatures are dead, but a one two and an O two are less scary without a hammer. So Mikey did take that ten, but had gained three off the solitude. He's gonna gain three more off solitude this turn. I believe we're looking at nine to six, unless I missed a fetch. I may have missed a fetch, maybe eight to six, probably correct. And unless Travis drew really well, I think we are about to go into game two. Okay. What is your opinion on the One Ring in Modern? You think it's okay? Yeah. I mean, there's not that many decks playing it, right? No, there, there really aren't. It's a, just like it's like blue-white control in Tron. Yeah. I love it in Tron. What yes. a, that's a fun yes. toy for Tron to get. And, I'm going to go seven here. Because the Forgenu and Sigarda's Aid both in play on Travis's side, but no hammer to uh, threaten lethal. Travis still on one card. I wasn't able to get a view of what it was. Looks like Mikey is going to fetch into turn, drop himself to seven. Travis has blockers for the <laughs> elementals. A swing wouldn't be lethal. Yeah, but, you know, the hammer player doesn't want to be at a point where on no. the defense. He's <laughs> got the two cards in hand. Uh, his Narset never revealed a counterspell. Uh, I don't know if he has one. I can't quite tell. Well, it was just too prismatic. Yeah, just, just right. ending ending. Yeah. Don't know what the last two cards are. Oh, he fetched a uh, Surveil Land, which really cool for Blue White to be able to fetch a tap land. That I'm is, a big fan yeah. of the new Surveil Lands. Got the Kahira. Now we have Vigilance. We'll force the block. Out of Travis here. Travis's face kind of tells the story of the way this uh, first game has gone. Uh, but that's why we play three games in Magic. Uh, after playing other card games without a sideboard, uh, I will say I love the sideboard aspect of Magic in helping to mitigate variance. Other yeah, games mitigate variance in different ways, and variance is a big part of card games, right? It, if there was no variance, it would be very boring to play. Yeah. Uh, Mikey Hopson takes down game one over Travis Brown, and now we will be moving to sideboards. So we take a look at sideboards here. Mikey has uh, Celestial Purge, Chalice of the Void, Dovin's Veto, Dress Down, Hallowed Moonlight, the Kahira that we saw in that game, Ray of Revelation, Soul Guide Lantern, Subtlety, Supreme Verdict, Force of Negation, and Stern Scolding. So, how'd you feel about game one? Uh, yeah, that was kind of how I, I thought it would probably go. I mean, the hammer definitely could sneak out game one and just have two, you know, broken of a start, but I felt like control is going to have the tools to get it done game one, but after sideboard, I think it's going to get a lot scarier. Yeah, just having spell pierce uh, come in for the hammer deck makes a big difference. Uh, we saw multiple turns there where Mikey tapped out to not die. He cast prismatic ending with his last two mana two different times, and in both cases, a single spell pierce in that moment would have uh, would have gotten us through. Uh, sideboarding is done. A little bit of movie magic right there, and we're going to be going on to game two with Travis Brown on the play. The thing about the spell pierces though, they don't really interact very well with the elementals or something like a supreme verdict. Yeah. So I mean, but countering, you know, prismatic ending. Just countering Prismatic Ending um, is a big deal. Countering even like a Narset that's digging or a One Ring that's going to buy a turn, like a turn four One Ring instead of a Supreme Verdict to buy you a turn. 100%. Yeah. Spell Pierce and then... That would be a blowout. Yep. Pitting Needles on Travis Brown's side, I don't think come in. There's an argument to shut down the uh, both the One Ring and the Planeswalkers, but I don't think it's the sort of thing you bring in. I really think that Spell Pierce is the main card he's going to be leaning on here. He also has uh, Failure and Comply, uh, the new spell. So Failure is a one and a blue and a returns target spell to its owner's hand, so he could have as many as six counter spells post-board. And yeah. because it doesn't counter, it can return a Supreme Verdict to its owner's hand. Mm, or, yep. So It's a lot of things that uh, Mike is going to have to be aware of and try to play around. Urza Saga, which I think was the big part of making the hammer, the hammer deck real uh, okay this time for Travis Brown. We didn't see that in game one. Um, quick Hammer and a Stoneforge Mystic that met a counter spell. Or met a subtlety, actually. 
So we're getting into game two here. I want to give a shout out to all our sponsors for this weekend. Wizards of the Coast, Ultra Pro, Melee.gg, DreamHack Magic, Generation X Comics and Games, Card Cash, Laughing Dragon MTG, Card Monster Games, Dave and Adams, Darkhound Studios, Park Hill Portraits, Playball Sports and Memorabilia, Greg Burton, James Harris, Penny and the Flamethrowers, Studio Aries, Panini America, Area 51 Collectibles, and Common Ground Games. You can see most of our sponsors scrolling on the bottom left uh, throughout the day as well. We appreciate any support that you give to them because it is through their tireless work and their donations that we are able to make this event happen for you every year. Mikey going to get a Raugren Triome, I believe, is what that one was. Yep, that's what it looks like. Just an extra color for Prismatic Ending. Travis is going to get to make a token here and probably just make a second token next turn. Uh, just having two three threes against the Azorius Control deck is probably a decent spot to be in. Mikey deep in the tank here. Yeah, one one misstep against the hammer deck and uh, well, half your life total is gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Preordain. Oh, oh, so doesn't like either of them. <laughs> Might be looking for a third land. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, honestly, because like and he seems you know, in decent spirits at least. All right, we do have a do have another land, yeah, fetch land and pass. Yeah. So as expected, the construct is made. Yeah. Looks like Travis has some uh, custom made construct tokens. Having all the correct. Oh, okay, we're, we're gonna switch it up. For <laughs> no this. fun allowed. No fun. <laughs> having, having all the correct tokens became like its own mini game in the last five years. Oh with my The goodness. amount of different tokens that hundred percent. Remember the old uh, the old mind game of flipping a twenty twenty token when you were playing burn or something yeah. else just to definitely back in the Lorwyn days, bitter blossom tokens mm -hmm. out on the table when you know you're playing elves. Yep. Travis Brown uh, again making a construct as expected. He will get to battle with this first one. Uh, trigger of a uh, saga is on the stack. Looks like Mikey might want to respond, uh, or does want to respond, or maybe he's just fetching to. Pretend like he has something he wants to do. Control deck's always known to uh, love a good respond. It's important. <laughs> I don't want to do things on my turn. I want to do them on your turn. I almost did that. Go ahead. Results. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Mikey casts Dress Down, uh, which, big deal, ends up killing both of the tokens. Both the tokens are zero zeros when they lose their abilities. They no longer get the plus X, plus X from all the artifacts in play, and so... Straight, to the, straight to the cemetery. Yeah, Dress down uh, a card popularized by Aspiring Spike uh, originally, I believe. Um, he may have found it somewhere else. I don't know. I know I found it because of him. Yeah. Uh, and it has grown into a format staple in modern. It's kind of crazy how under the radar the card flew. And then now it's just everywhere. And it's amazing all the different things it does. Does a lot of work. Is that uh, a Ginger Brute? Ginger Brute is the find off of the Saga. It's a nice Saga coming into play. It's one of my favorite cookie uh, monsters in the game. Uh, probably my actual favorite cookie yeah. in the game, to be honest. I was like, uh, so, and then we have Springleaf Drum guys, into... This is, this is preferred in modern. A lot of people uh, Steel Shaper's Gift. Yeah, one mana tutors are fine, right? Yep, and Steel Shaper's Gift is going to get the Cryptic we talked about. Yeah. So, for those of you that don't know, maybe haven't played with the new set, uh, Cryptic is a two and a blue. Uh, when it comes into play, you put the top card of your library face down. It's not morph. It's not. I don't, there's like seven different versions. It becomes a two two with ward two. If it's a creature, you can flip it up for its converted casting cost, and you can return the cryptic coat. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. They're on top of it for. Got some professionals working behind the scenes. I used this card to good effect and sealed yesterday. Actually, it was a oh yeah, strong. how'd that go? It went really well. We uh, we got to the top four of the Ian Jashaway uh, Memorial event, which happens on Fridays, the day before the Hunter Burton, Burton Memorial. Reminder, there are dozens and dozens of side events. If you decide you want to come out today or tomorrow, there will still be plenty for you to do. Mikey draws. I don't know why that card is face down. May have missed something. Deep in the tank. Ginger Brute, not scary by itself. Hammer, not scary without a cheap way to equip it. Cryptic can get scary quick. The, the That card gives uh, unblockable, so even with like, solitude in play or yep. subtlety, you can't. 
can't stop it, and it can just churn out two twos. It must be doing like a surveil. Yeah, definitely. Besides, keep it on top. I wonder if we could see a return of some uh, some miracle seeing play with these new surveil lands. Interesting idea. Uh, Miracle's obviously a giant part of Legacy for years because of Brainstorm, the yeah. ability to put stuff back. But as Surveil becomes more popular, it does become more likely that you see them. No Sensei's Top, obviously, is what killed that in Modern. Uh, I'm glad to see Sensei's Top gone. I love <laughs> Sensei's Top, but Sensei's Top mirrors took forever. Just a lot of time dirtling around. I think I have watched the Pro Tour having some restored where the Miracles won like the block constructed thing. I've probably watched that a hundred times. It's one of the deck. I never got to play block constructed in that mm -hmm. format. Oh my god, that's one of like one my of favorite decks, decks I've play. never gotten to play. Yep. First construct made by Travis. Uh, trigger here. He has to decide if he wants to make another construct, uh, or use the mana, or what he wants to do here. Uh, no uh, threat of getting dressed down immediately, but <laughs> could happen again later. It happened Mikey, at any time. Mikey tapped out at 18, unlikely to die from 18, uh, but. Not entirely impossible. Yeah, I mean, there is a hammer in play. That's already a three power construct. It's going to be a four power construct with whatever um, Travis gets here. If he has a way to equip for zero, he would just get another hammer and probably go for it. Obviously, solitude still an answer even when your <laughs> opponent's tapped out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I was like, it's kind Travis of Brown way. in the tank here. Uh, Mikey, I, I think, understands he's taking most of the time, so he'll, he'll allow his opponent <laughs> some time to think about what he wants to do here. That's why you play fast, so when you get to an important turn, you can take your time. You know, in years of playing mostly blue-white control, I took very few unintentional draws. Uh, you just have to be really quick about making your decisions. I pride myself on never going to time playing lantern control for two yeah. seasons. <laughs> A lot of practice with your decks help, right? If you've oh, seen yeah. the situation over and over again, it's easier to know what you should be doing in this particular situation. Travis thought he knew what he wanted, thought about it again, uh, and he is going to get a pithing needle, I believe. That's all. That is what that needle. is. It's the uh, the tattoo guy. Yeah. Ed Hardy. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I would wear that on a hoodie. I like that art a lot. Get a verification for what was needled here. I can't quite read that handwriting. Yeah. Stone Forge Mystic comes in. Yeah, that's pretty threatening. <laughs> Nettle cyst. I believe that's what that guy's called, right? Or is that the sword, the caldera? Oh no, no, no! You're right. You're right. That is that is caldera. Caldera complete. Uh, funny to have seen um, the original big uh, equipment get replaced with Cauldra. Uh, True. Okay, so the Pithing Needle is on one ring. Um, Batter Skull originally was the Stoneforge Mystic target yep. of choice. Now Cauldra Complete is just better in, yep. in those <laughs> ways. Yeah. Uh, that's what happens with Power Creep. Or right? Batter Skull. <laughs> Mikey Hopkins has fallen to 13. He knows his opponent has Cauldra Complete in hand. Um, sitting on six mana, not sure how many cards in hand from this angle. He's definitely further on the back foot than I believe he was at any point in the last game, even after catching the two for one with the dress down on the early turns. Yeah, Travis just got a lot of different diverse threats and things going on and needle on ring, so that's not a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. So ring is still a time walk. Sure. <laughs> it's not sort of shut out. Yeah. And Mikey has multiple outs to get rid of the needle. If he, you know, finds a one ring and decides that's the way he wants to go with prismatic endings, he may have left a couple of Teferi's in post board as well. Yeah, besides the ending on the stone forge mystic. Probably smart. You don't want to be facing down a cauldron complete and then just going to pass back to Travis. Travis is going to get in for what looks like five. Uh, we have uh, uh, Leyline. Okay. Yeah. Leyline mining. The fact that that card has flash is unreasonable. <laughs> it's like it's already cost one some of the time. The fact, why did we have to get it flash? Yeah. It's a solid removal spell. Yeah, it's very good. I kind of wish you did too. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mikey's gonna fetch down to 12. Travis is left currently with no threats. Uh, he has five mana sources, but Springleaf Drums don't really count unless you've got creatures in play. <laughs> so sitting on three, the Cauldron Complete is uh, nowhere near making it into play. Mikey has uh, oh, shifted this game over the past two turns really quickly. He had uh, all the removal that he needed for both threats and is uh, right where blue-white control wants to be. Untapping when your opponent like, has no I'll creatures. Get, I'll land off this, right? I mean, I will not. Yeah. Does he have any cards left in his hand? I believe he has face down cards in black sleeves. Okay. Oh, nope. Oh, no. He's just. He, oh, yeah. There's. Uh, well, no, actually, I don't know if he does. Yeah. I don't know that he has. I think that's it. He's just. Just on to here. Yeah. All right. Travis Brown inching closer to playing the cauldron. <laughs> Slowly but surely. I believe you're right. Yeah, that's one card in Mikey's hand. It that's going in. Every bit. Yeah. <laughs> Charles Netherlands. Oh, boy. <laughs> Five. Ten. Charles Netherlands. Another land up the top as well. Oh, yeah, I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, and step on that. Yeah. You're at nine. Just man. nine. So any creature is additional mana for Travis here. Yep. Any land gets him one step closer to being able to cast the Caldra. Yeah, Mikey would like Travis to draw uh, no cards. Yeah, just, just, just don't draw anything, something. please. Maybe yeah. hammers. Yeah, just yeah, yeah much more. Drums. Yeah. I think it was another hammer. <laughs> Travis currently at nine. Mikey at nine. Mikey's here trying to go the distance. We're going to fetch up Hallowed Fountain here. This Kahir's done a lot of work both games. Yeah. <laughs> Just getting to play a free companion in blue-white control <laughs> seems like cheating. I don't think Kahir was designed to be the blue-white <laughs> control companion, but that has been their where we're lot at. in life. That's where we're at. Travis Brown still looks very calm. Chalice on one. Oh. Chalice on one. I don't know how much that'll actually affect the game at this point. Um, so, a lot of interaction spells at one, I suppose. Nice. Yeah, it, it shuts off spell pierce, but it also shuts off like the ways for Travis to equip easily with Scarred as Aid. Yeah. Um, maybe should have played that second hammer that's stuck in his hand before we got here. And this is uh, Travis is at three, and that's the game. Yeah. Travis Brown. Unable to find the mana for the cauldron that he found. Mikey found just enough interaction going down to, to zero cards in hand to take control of the game. And Companion, just doing what Companion does. He has three extra card in hand. Gahira uh, lets Mikey take down round one of the Hunter Merton. Some people refuse to not play Commander even in Modern. Yeah. And we are back here. In the booth, uh, I'm David Palmer. This is Hal Brady. We'll bring you coverage all weekend long of the Hunter Memorial, uh, Hunter Burton Memorial Open. Please forgive me. Um, you can find more information uh, at our website, and you can see information about all of our different sponsors scrolling across the bottom of the screen uh, today. How'd you feel about our first round? Oh, sweet. We had a, a couple of Texas regular uh, battling mages, and uh, yeah, that was, that was a fun match. Blue White Aggro versus Blue White Control. Okay. Well, we will be back in about 30 seconds. See you on the other side. Oh, do we have the next round already? Oh, but